City University of Hong Kong is an international university which emphasizes the integration of research and teaching. The university promotes diversified cross-cultural studies through various educational programs. In this class, we hope you will get more challenges to receive top curriculum. To promote our educational vision, City University of Hong Kong produced a series called Beyond Boundaries, Dialogue with Presidents of World's Leading Educational Institutions. Professor Wei Kuo, President of City University of Hong Kong, talks to presidents of universities and principals of high schools around the world, exploring each other's strengths and looking forward to the future direction of educational development. In this episode, President Wei Kuo takes us to the Indian Institute of Technology, which is known as the hardest university to get into in the world. It has nurtured countless world-class talent in the technology and business management fields, as well as tech unicorns. India became independent in 1947 and underwent modernization, so there was an urgent need for a large number of engineering and technical personnel. Therefore, in 1951, the Indian government established the Indian Institute of Technology to develop professional talent. The IIT, with 70 years of history, is a legend in higher education in India. There is a saying, when you get one foot in the IIT, the other foot has stepped into Silicon Valley in the United States. However, admission to the IIT is very competitive. From one million applicants, only the top 3,000 candidates are admitted to this prestigious institution of higher education. The university has nurtured a large group of distinguished talent in computer engineering and software design, as well as in the financial and business management fields. The U.S. 60 Minutes television news program once commented that the IIT is equivalent in status to putting Harvard, MIT, and Princeton University together. The IIT has also faced challenges under globalization. In the past, most of its graduates went on to work in the US or other developed countries. But in the recent years, less than 5% of the graduates have gone abroad. The university management realized that offering only tech majors put the university at a disadvantage in the global university rankings so the university had to recruit more local and international talent to increase the number of majors in the humanities and social science. In this episode, we invited the director of the IIT, Professor Rao, to share his experience and vision and how he leads the university to face the challenges of globalization. Professor Wei Kuo, President of City University of Hong Kong, is well known for his research on the reliability of electronic systems and nuclear energy. In his early years, he worked at Bell Laboratories in the United States. He was one of the few Chinese scholars who held the position of department head and dean of the School of Engineering in an American university, and was conferred academicians in various countries. Professor Wei Kuo has served as the president of City U for more than 10 years. 
His philosophy of education is summarized in the lyrics of the City U anthem, which he wrote, Learn and Question Beyond Boundaries. Professor Wei Kuo has also published several books about education. He is particularly concerned about the challenges facing contemporary education around the world.各位朋友大家好，今天很高兴，我们可以访问新德里跟印度IIT德里的校长Professor uh, thank you for taking the time to chat about uh, higher education in India, and in particular, uh, we're interested in knowing more about IIT Delhi. Thank you, Professor Kau, for visiting uh, IIT Delhi, and also welcome to our campus. So we are very honored to have you with us. It's very good to be here. This is a cold day, but we feel very warm. The IIT is uh, such international recognized and I've been in USA for many years, many years. And no matter where I go, either in university or research lab, I see IIT graduates all over the places. Today, you know, even in Silicon Valley, uh, there are so many Indians. And I will assume many of them are IIT graduates. And the Indian students, IIT in particular, uh, having a very strong program in electrical engineering, electronics, and the contribution of IT to the, not only Indian, but all the, the world economy is tremendous. Um, well, what is your view about your education system in India? How is it different from the, the systems in the other countries and areas? I think uh, the, the systems are in a way similar, in a way similar. But uh, our admission processes, you know, tend to be very, very competitive. In IITs, the faculty standard is of international standard. We never compromise on the, on the faculty quality. For example, on this campus, if there are good candidates available, we could have taken 300 more faculty. So if you, if you look at it, you know, we could have offered 300 people faculty positions tomorrow if they are available. And uh, I think the autonomy also plays a big role. The government of India, you know, uh, gives us a lot of autonomy as compared to other institutions, which is uh, one good thing. We are created, so we are only address. Uh, I mean, we are only answerable to the parliament and the funding. You know, we are government of India is also very generous when it comes to funding. Today, for example, uh, the the to, to give you the exact numbers, the fee that we collect from students is just five percent of our total expenditure. So the education on this campus is, is almost free. And uh, that is because a student who clears our examination, there is no way we can deny that student admission into our institution. So whether the student says, you know, I, have, I don't have funds or I cannot join, nothing doing. So if the student clears our exam, we have to provide admission and take care of all the finances ourselves. So that is the culture that we follow. IIT has really put a lot of emphasis um, on technology, engineering, and science, and some business. So they are very focused. And that makes this IT really uh, excel. Uh, somehow, I think IT is uh, more like uh, Caltech or Georgia Tech. It's more like uh, uh, Americans' uh, MIT type of operation. So that, has that been always the case from the very beginning to focus on a very you know, um, well-defined subjects? That has been the case, uh, which I, I think is in a way there are positives, but there are also negatives associated with it. We are not comprehensive enough is now beginning to affect us in, in multiple ways. And uh, we are also now making efforts to become a little bit more comprehensive without diluting the focus on technology. For example, last year we started a school of public policy on the campus. We have a very strong humanities department 
humanities and social sciences, but we also started a new school of public policy on the campus now. We are also we have also just uh, started a new department of design, so where we are now trying to admit students. Uh, we have a creativity who are creative, and uh, and for example, we are also discussing now internally whether these students who are getting admissions, getting admitted into the department of design, should they require a mass physics chemistry kind of a background, or can they be people of any discipline or any background, but only creativity is is the is the core strength. Well, good to know this uh, the move. This move is consistent with uh, many universities uh, in the, in the whole world in terms of internalization. Namely, we understand um, engineering technology should benefit human beings. Uh, in order to benefit from them, we need to know our society a little bit better. At the same time, when we focus something, we also have consider other supplemental ingredient. Um, to be more, um, you know, marginal beneficial to the societies. For many years, most of the graduates of the Indian Institute of Technology worked in Silicon Valley in the U.S. and in world-class technology companies. But the situation has changed in recent years. Most of the graduates now prefer to start their own businesses in India. Many tech unicorns in India were founded by teachers and students of the Indian Institute of Technology. What are other things you look into um, to make this system, IIT such a great university better known and embrace the outsider to come, both the faculty and students, and how are you different from the other universities in Asia? How are you different from the universities in uh, USA or, or UK? I think one of the major differences is we are not uh, international enough in terms of the student admissions or faculty recruitments. That is one thing where fundamentally IITs are different from, let's say, City University of Hong Kong or any good US university. And uh, we have, you know, for a very long time, been very inward focused, but uh, now we have realized that uh, that is beginning to affect our international reputation, the international rankings. So very consciously for the past uh, three years now, we have been focusing on internationalization of our campuses. Now for the first time this year, uh, last year 2019, we announced uh, 500 PhD fellowships for foreign students, for international students. And Government of India also announced 1,000 PhD fellowships for, uh, for ASEAN uh, students. And uh, now any good student from any part of the world you know, wants to study with us, we are providing them uh, the free tuition and uh, 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 easy uh, free tuition particularly and take care of all the financial kind of aspects. But we are primarily targeting at the master's and PhD level because the undergraduate admission in IITs is only through one single examination, the joint entrance examination. We are beginning to conduct the joint entrance examination in multiple countries now. This year, it will be held in five different countries. We have plans to start uh, our examination, the joint entrance examination in the US. Well, that's, that's really exciting and that, that seems to be very consistent to international trend. And although also how IIT is perceived by people from outsiders, such as me, because the, the students, undergraduate, you have the very best in any countries you can think about. But the graduate recruitment and research and development, it seems we go for the more um, you know, international trend uh, to beef up the research program. And the, the administration system, I, I've noticed, because uh, I visit a lot of places, I noticed that there was a trend in the whole world that people are really more going toward the American way, I call it. American way, in my opinion, in terms of higher education. Without the American fee, I think. Yeah, without American. Of course, American universities have its disadvantages. Yeah. But, but the practice, you know, looking for excellence and uh, be open-minded and, and promote entrepreneurship and also the uh, intellectual property things, I think the IT is also uh, on the same wave like many other Asian universities and also the faculty recruitment and the um, administrative system structures in India. Uh, with my very preliminary uh, understanding also, 
um, uh, is adapting the American practice. Until recently, you know, a lot of research was happening on this campus. We publish in good journals and all that, but it remains as research. There is not much of a translational kind of a work that happens now that used to happen on our campuses because for us to take the research to society, the only mode of uh, doing it was by collaborating with industries. But one thing that has changed in the last five years, now the students and faculty members are very keen to start companies and use the startup uh, mechanism to, to take their technologies to the society. That is one change that has taken place, which is now impacting our, our campuses very significantly. You will find 100 startups now on this campus and almost uh, you know, one in five, one in six faculty members will have their own startups. And uh, these are the new things you know, that we are beginning to see now. And we are also, Government of India is also very supportive of the startups coming out of these campuses and, and even the institutions. For example, we provide grants to faculty. We give them, they can take a leave up to three years if they say that I want to start a company. So all those things are becoming possible now. So that should now help us to, you know, showcase some of our technologies in the society. Otherwise, many of our students have gone to US, gone to Silicon Valley and done all of that, but they were not able to do it in the country. And one thing which is also very important uh, for, for uh, you know, to tell you is until let's say 10 years ago, if you looked at where our students have gone, 90, 80 percent of them would have gone to US. Yes. But in the last three years, if you look at the number of IIT Delhi graduates going abroad, that number is less than 5 percent. Wow. Less than 5% of students are actually wanting to go abroad now. And they are all staying back in the country and they want to create wealth in this country. They want to start companies in this country. Any big uh, you know, company you see coming out, of, uh, coming out of India like Flipkart, Snapdeal, Zomato, they are all unicorns now. All of them are started by IIT alumni. IIT Delhi, for example, has about 16 unicorns uh, from wow. our alumni. And, uh, and so out of some 30 unicorns created by all IITians anywhere in the world, 16 have come out of alumni of IIT Delhi. Well, that's exciting. In fact, this conversation can go many dimensions and I find this is something, you know, Confucius used to say, you have to throw out a play to know what's happening. So indeed, that's what's happening. In fact, this conversation generates uh, a few um, related uh, issues. I want to get your advice about this. Uh, in the past, all the IIT graduates would like to get a master PhD program, many go to USA. That's what happened in my generation too. But today, um, many of them actually will stay in the community, Indian or, or Delhi area, and, or maybe Bangalore or whatever. But do you find the students are less interested in getting a degree, such as a PhD degree or master degree? They, are they more interested in getting a their knowledge is more realized. Unfortunately, you know, so that is true. And uh, but uh, in fact, we are we are trying to attract our undergraduate students to join our PhD programs mm -hmm. through multiple mechanisms. There is, for example, a Prime Minister's Research Fellowship Scheme, and where uh, in the Prime Minister's Research Fellowship Scheme, when our own undergraduate student says, "I wish to join the PhD program here," we pay them stipend almost similar to an entry level assistant professor. Whenever I talk to students, I tell them that even if you want to become an entrepreneur, you know, you need to become good at something. And to become good at something, you know, you have to pursue your education for some more time, acquire whatever knowledge you can, and then, you know, you, you start doing whatever you wish to do. Well, Professor Rao, thank you very much. I think well, I'm going to uh, make a short summary. Uh, the impressive uh, interview uh, give us a chance to learn things from other places, such as IIT. The Indians have um, a lot of talents in the whole world, and IIT in particular is the uh, cream of the crop. From this conversation, you can tell that it doesn't have to be big. And actually, there was a famous book I encourage everyone to read, Small is Beautiful. You have to have a niche to show the contribution to the society. The so-called internationalization is fully realized in India. Um, they, they have not, their higher education has not been as well recognized as it is now. 
I predict the IIT will be among the very best universities in the whole world. So they really ride with a high to look into the, the futures of this higher education. The world really is getting very small. Let me uh, thank Professor Rao, um, the director, actually the president of IIT Delhi, to uh, share with us his view and share lies about some higher education. Since believing, well, thank you for being uh, reviewing this program. And I hope Professor Zhao will have a chance to visit Hong Kong, visit CTU, and we will exchange information to learn things from each other. Thank you. Thank Appreciate. you. In the next episode, we will take you to Berlin, Germany to visit a university known as the mother of all modern universities. With 55 alumni and researchers who have won a Nobel Prize, Humboldt University of Berlin.